Can you move to your right so I can see both of you? Sure. There we go. Get to mute everybody, Jeff. Oh. It's under participants that you mute people. Uh, I can't. See. Oh, here it is. Um, mute all. There we go. And now I need to close this. I don't know how to close that. Down here, so it's down here. I don't know how to close that. It's okay. Oh gosh, darn it! Sorry, okay. I'm not. Yeah. That's what you get when you have amateurs doing this. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's start. Let's go. With good spirit, cheerful spirit. Okay. All right, I'm going to take the advice and put as much on Johannes as I can <laughs> to spare you all. Welcome, everybody, to Unity Namaste Village on Sunday, uh, September. 26th of 2021. Um, we are, the weather is clearing here. The sky is getting brighter. The sun is coming out. The colors here are vibrant as ever. The air is clean as ever. And this community is as kind and compassionate and loving as always. So we are very excited to be here with you today. And forgive me, but this is my maiden vo voyage doing platform. Johannes and I have been doing ministry together for 11 years, but it's always been in Spanish. And I try to spare the world my Spanish. <laughs> so this is my maiden, maiden voyage doing what is called the Unity Platform, which is introducing the minister. But let's start with an opening prayer. So if you will all take a deep breath, get comfortable, as I will. Close your eyes if that feels good. And it's time to commune with God as you understand God is. So take a deep breath and put your concentration in your heart space. And by that I mean as if, if your big toe was hurting and your concentration would all be on your big toe, focus your mind on your heart space. Let your heart soften and expand. And now think of a situation where you knew you felt love, where you loved someone or you, someone loved you. Look in the eyes of a beloved or holding a baby, seeing a grandchild come up to run up to you whatever situation it may be, feel that love in your heart space. Focus on it. Open your heart to God. That is what God is. And now, open your mind to God. Feel the peace of God in your head and let it spread to your body. Know that as you surrender, to that peace as you surrender to what God is. You are never alone. You are loved as you are feeling those loving feelings. And with the love in your heart and the peace that's spreading through you, know that, know the joy that your soul is one with the universe, that you are part of divine intelligence that divine intelligence, God, is always there with you. And you need only go to this space, this communion with God, this prayer, in peace and silence, to find that guidance. Indeed, once you've done this enough, you just need to say, God, I am here for you. Guide me. Mm -hmm. That is what prayer is, communion with God. So from this loving space of peace and joy we say thank you god thank you god thank you god amen, amen. let me uh, quickly say a few words about unity namaste village just to explain it to you since uh, i am uh, the workhorse behind this and what unity namaste village is is essentially brother james francis has had the insight and the vision to host a unity ministry within Namaste Village and provided a system whereby we can bring in new ministers every month. There will be ministers and residents 
and there'll be, there'll be a new one every month for the next, through April we have them booked and we have a few lined up after April and they will be here and doing the Sunday service every Sunday and doing other things as well. Some of you remember David MacArthur was here in April and May. That was the prototype for us doing this and he did workshops as well and that's and many of them will want to do workshops and give you guidance and do other things as well. But there will be a unity minister living here in residence from now on. There may be a gap of a week or so, or there may be a problem, in which case Johannes, and hopefully not I, will fill in. Like September. Like September. September. Like Dan Holloway, who was uh, a speaker last week. He was supposed to be here in September, but his wife took suddenly ill and he had to cancel the trip. And they're doing well, uh, she's doing better, and Dan will hopefully be here, as planning on being here, in fact, next year. So that's, that's the model, and that's what we're doing. October, Diane is coming. Thank you. And in October, Diane Scribner, Clevenger Scribner, I have to figure out which name she prefers to go by. But Diane will be here for all of October, and you're going to love her, and you're going to love all the ministers that come through here. But we're looking forward to introducing Diane to you. She should be here, I think, on Tuesday of this week. So, Diane, if you're watching, we're ready for you. Um, so, what we are doing is Unity Namaste Village. That's the idea. And we are applying for the chart to be chartered by Unity. And as soon as we are chartered, we will be officially become Unity of Namaste Village. So, that's what's on, on route. Now, as tempted as I am to introduce my wife with a very... With, with a very oh, I have to do the daily word. Thank you. See, that's why she's here. <laughs> for among other reasons. The daily word for today, Sunday, September 26, 2021, is let go, let God. Divine love, wisdom, and understanding express through me. If I feel unsure of the next step in any situation, I let go and let God. I don't walk away from difficulty or try to force resolutions. Instead, I release my tight mental grip on problems and open myself to solutions. I let go of my ego's desire for control and my need to bring about specific outcomes. I believe there are solutions and remedies beyond what my mind can conceive. I yield to those possibilities. I trust the indwelling divine presence just as I would trust a mentor. Letting go and letting God means creating space for the dynamic creative and energy of spirit to inspire and surprise me. Divine love, wisdom, and understanding fuel my thoughts, express through my words, and guide me in all ways. These words were inspired by Psalm 86, verse 11. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. Amen. And now, as tempted as I am to give a lengthy and well-earned introduction to my wife, I'll just say, here's Reverend Johanny. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, my love. Thank you. That was beautiful. Boy, careful. Thank you. Uh, okay, I think I'm here. Happy to be here. Thanks, Sonia, <laughs> for doing all these days services. Well, I was in business of moving. Oh. Okay, beloved ones. I don't know if you remember here, those here at Namaste, we had a fire cere ceremony with uh, Brother James Francis. So, uh, Brother James Francis, during that fire ceremony, which was really interesting, he asked us at the end, of the ceremony to, to say one word that encompasses our intention for the ceremony. Remember, we did a circle. It was really powerful. And my word was freedom. And some people ask me what I meant. I said, what do you mean, freedom, at the end of the ceremony? Well, um, our goal at 
Unity para Todos, which is my Spanish ministry and online, and of course Unity uh, here at Namaste Village. Our goal is to free ourselves from everything that hurts us and holds us back to free ourselves from whatever is not allowing us to live abundantly. Why not? Because we had that choice. It is a choice. To free ourselves from anything that is blocking the awareness of God's presence. That's, for me, the ultimate goal. To liberate ourselves from everything that limits us and to open our hearts to all the good and greatness that inevitably come from God. So I'm here trying to express what the realization of our oneness with God and with all that exists brings. It's my own experience. Realizing God and only God without any other agenda is our goal, period. While on this journey that we call life, we will all experience challenges, of course. We will have challenges. But we can choose to face those challenges in a healing way. Again, it's our choice. Now, it requires constant self-reflection, a loving heart, and most of all, being brave and honest with ourselves. It's always about ourselves. I'm going to share a story. This is a true story of, of a man, oh, a man, a man that, true story, eh? He was imprisoned for 30 years in a lonely cell, 30 years. The only exercise he was able to do while was in, in, in prison was walking his cell. 10 steps forward and 10 steps back. And he will count those steps. One, two, three, four, five, ten, 10. And then he would walk back. And he did that six, seven, who knows how many times a day for 30 years. When he completed his sentence and was released, he was still counting his steps. He went out of jail and he started walking. One, two, three, like always, in automatic pilot, no? When he reached his 10th step, he stopped. He started to sweat, to shake, he was in panic, and that step number 11 felt like a task of titans. Well, he couldn't keep walking. He fainted. He couldn't do that step number 11. And this is not just the story of a particular individual. It is the story of each one of us. What I call step number 11 is the step that must be taken to break with, with self-defeating habits. It takes enormous effort to overcome habits or addictive behaviors that we acquired in childhood. Okay, this is 
what I'm talking about. Spiritually, we know that when circumstances present themselves in which we know we should deviate from our old patterns, we have the opportunity to apply spiritual principles. It's an opportunity. Many choose over and over again the same patterns of behavior, the same 10 steps. Instead of choosing to release, let go, and keep walking the spiritual path. Do you know how many times during counseling or talking to congregants and even friends, they say, oh, yes, 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 I know that. Yes, but you apply it. I say, oh, I have heard that 1,000 times. So what? You can hear those things <laughs> one million times. Beloved, beloved ones. On the spiritual path, like in anything we want to master, practice, perseverance, consistency, bring results. Letting go of victimhood and anger and resentment, which only hurt ourselves. It's only to ourselves that we do that. Now, these things take effort and focus and self-realization. It can seem overwhelming to stay on the spiritual path, <coughs> to wake up spiritually. It seems a task of titans to sustain a life of prayer. This is every day. This is each, each moment. Prayer is constantly. Our thoughts are prayers, we say over and over. Sustain a life of prayer. Forgiveness, this is daily. We all make mistakes. What are we doing to ourselves? Holding resentment, justifying our behaviors, unloving behavior, so we decide, no, you know what, I'm going to release this because this is a gift to myself releasing the past. And that is what I call step number 11. We all know that what we do to others, we are actually doing to ourselves. There's no such thing like anything out there. We all know that when we act in an unloving way, this behavior blocks the good in our lives. I'm not blocking the good of anybody when I hold the resentment. I'm blocking the good to myself, to my life. It seems impossible for some people, beloved ones, and I'm saying this with love in my heart. It seems impossible to stop criticizing, blaming, and minimizing others, acting like children. Sometimes I'm like, oh my God. You know, the other day I was reflecting, and we are, each one of us, each one of you there on the Sun call also, we are the ones that the master teacher Jesus called in a course in miracles. When he said, literally, he said, I need dedicated teachers to help me in the awakening of the song. He is calling each one of us. I need dedicated teachers, he says. We are the ones that he called the light of the world. When we go to the gospel in 
actually in Matthew, this is what he said. He says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a table. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. And he keeps saying, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus is talking about you, about you, about you, and about me. Shining your light is your step number 11. That step is the one that frees us from what holds us back from being what we are called to be. The step that breaks the chains that imprison and limit us. So, Ravi, Jeff, Jack, all of you, they are, and soon, what is your step number 11? What is? What are you doing or not doing that you know keeps you imprisoned? Whatever that step is, own it. You are doing it to yourself. Regardless of how difficult taking step number 11 may seem, in some situations, because sometimes life presents situations, but we can break the cycles of sadness, scarcity, loneliness, attack, boredom, pain, grief. We can free ourselves from all the negatives that we hold in our minds because everything is happening in our minds. There's nothing outside. Everything is in our minds. So we can free ourselves from the unloving that we speak or do or even think. We can do it. Expressions of fear or guilt, attack, doing to others what we would not like them to do to us. Aggressive, aggressiveness. That's the word, no? Aggressiveness. Those things take away our peace. Prevent us from being aware of the presence of God, the good in our lives. Teach only, I say, the Course in Miracles says, teach only love because that's who you are. And I say, teach and live only love because that's who you are. And the reason you, we take step number 11 is to understand and express the love that we really are, to awaken enlighten ourselves to live in Christ consciousness call it what you want the idea is or the choice or the opportunity is to go through life bravely choosing to love over and over again dare to love is easy or easier to take the human way. Uh -uh. I'm asking you to be brave, dare to love. That is the best gift you can give to yourself and of course to the whole humanity. Dare to love 
beyond fear, beyond problems, beyond disease and challenges. Dare to love beyond anything. We all, we have all been called to the highest function that this world can offer. Love. So you are a child of the highest, a creation of unconditional love. And you are constantly being called to live up to who you are. The voice for God will always be calling you. Paul said in Ephesians, if you want to find it in the Bible, he says, wake up, you who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Wake up, arise from the dead. Whatever negative cycle, cycle you find yourself in, have the courage to apply whatever way you have for healing. There are thousands of exercises and meditations and steps. Free yourself from what does not allow you allow you to express the good, the holy, and the beautiful in your life. So what is your step number 11? You are the only one who can know that and answer to that. What is that you have to do and you haven't just done it yet? The man in the story was so used to taking 10 little steps that he believed it was impossible to continue when he had the whole world in front of him. Freedom for him. And he couldn't do the step number 11. Listen, sometimes we are so used to negative attitude, which are affecting the quality of our existence, that we do not realize that step number 11 is at hand, is right there in front of you. And you are not alone in this task. God said, so, daughter, you are always with me and all my things are yours. In the Course in Miracles, we say, God walks with you or God goes with you wherever you go. So my question for you today, ask yourself, ask your heart, are you living the reality you want, are you? We are born to live, and living means being happy and having peace and following your heart. Love is courage. Behind everything you are experiencing is God, the infinite mystery holding you, supporting you, loving you. So regardless of your idea of God, each of us is an individual and eternal expression of that infinite mystery. And you are being called to be more than you have dared to express until now. 
you are being called to take step number 11 toward the freedom of your being. Freedom. That's what I mean when I say freedom in that prayer circle. You are a creation of the highest, constantly being invited to live up to who you are. Do not diminish yourself. You just have to open your heart and free yourself from what prevents you from flying. I'm talking about flying higher and higher. So be brave and take, I would say, dare to take your step number 11. And my question for you is, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, good. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you all. We are remembering the truth of our being with every meeting, with every prayer, with every session. So all we do is, is that, to awakening ourselves. So I'm going to ask you that with that intensity to be brave and let us, let us shine our lives. We can, for example, we do the, the prayer for protection right now. Well, let us open our heart and do the prayer for protection. Prayer for protection to the whole planet. The whole planet needs our love, our intentions, our, our presence. So let us unite together and say from our heart here at Namaste Village, let us from our heart to say together to the whole world, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. God bless you and allow your shine, your light shine this week. God bless you all.